one three five for two thousand. We're going to go to some checks. Who has their one three five for two thousand and twenty one? Nobody. Bueller. Bueller. Nobody. Okay. So. Who wants to tell me what a 135 is? I'm cheating, but I heard you yesterday on the call. It's our GPS. Okay, it's tell me more about that. Our three goals. One is, one, is, one is goals, three is our priorities, and then five strategies to support those priorities. Okay, so. Have you done your one, three, five? Nope, but I'm planning on it tomorrow. Okay, so let's explore that. Cool, thank you, Sean, for, for speaking up on that. Neil, have you done your one, three, five for 2021? Not yet, but I have, I, I have it scheduled for next week. I'm taking next week out of the office most of the time. Okay, so. <clears throat> what, what we do, what we want to do is to take action, some massive action. So what does that mean? Hey, Joan. So we, what, what we want to do is we don't want to overthink things. You got to simplify things. Okay, everyone. And so I don't care if you're brand new in the business or you're me, like me, 36 years in the business, we have to simplify things. So this here, if you see this, I, I'm, I'm like real simple, but if you take, it's a funnel. You see the top says GPS, then it says 135. So your GPS is your dollar amount. So let's just say Bob here on this piece of paper wants to make $200,000 a year. Okay. So Bob gets, we give Bob three priorities. So the goal is the G. The, the numbers right here are the priorities. And then he's got five strategies to these priorities, okay? So I don't care, like Katja, she, I see her taking notes. That's awesome. Like, so she's running our concierge department. Bailey's running the front. See her, she's in command there. Give us a thumbs up, Bailey, right? Alejandro's on here. Neil's on here. So we got a lot of leadership on here, which is great. And so everybody needs a one, three, five. So if I meet with, if I meet with Bailey and I say, hey, Bailey, where's your one, three, five? So what's her one thing for the year, right? So what's, so what's Neil's one thing for the year? All right. So like a Dolores, see, so Dolores is one thing for the year. So I know Dolores real well. I hold her accountable. I know she shows up on this call. What is she not doing? I know I got to get her back off this call and into her one thing. Right. So, <clears throat> Cause I'm, I, I want to help her succeed. My job as your partner is just to all help you succeed. So just don't overthink it. Keep this simple. So you're going to write the number at the top. So I don't care if it's 50,000, write it at the top. I don't care if it's a hundred thousand, write it at the top, but that number at the top, this is where the rubber meets the road. And this is how it's going to get into listings. So that number at the top is non-negotiable. So that's not like, pie in the sky number. That's not like, so this is a non-negotiable number. Means like you can't shrink it. You can't, you know, like you, you have to blow through that number. Okay. So I encourage people to make that number as conservative as possible so that you know, by May, June, July at the latest, you have blown through that number and you're heading past that number. So your cellular system and your nervous system is excited about the business you're in. If you're in a business and you never hit your goals, are you, are you happy? No, it's frustrating, it's defeating, right? It's defeating. So we wanna always set ourselves up for success. We always wanna set our day up for success. So that's when we're just gonna start talking about listings, right? So <clears throat> I'm gonna make it simple for you. You're all gonna do your one, three, five right now, Neil and Sean, you're not gonna wait till next week. So we're gonna do it right now. So. Right. So you're going to write the number up top. It's going to be so con so conservative to where Neil's laughing at me. So <clears throat> it's going to be like this number pays your expenses, pays your bills, keeps your partner happy, 
keeps it. I mean, this number is really, really a solid number that if you hit this number, you're going to feel really good about yourself. Now that's your goal. Your target, your target is different. If you want to hit something here with a rifle, you better aim a little higher, right? So your target's going to be higher. Your target can be like where you end up at the end of the year. Your target can be your stretch, okay? But your goal, we hit. So if I tell Katja, Katja, we have to close 25 files this month and she agrees to it, that's a non-negotiable. We have to hit that number, okay? So whether she has to call, text, reach out to you guys, whatever, we got to hit that number because we need to be profitable so we can pour more money into that division to, to, to do what? To serve our agent partners, you guys, okay? We built that out to serve you guys so you can stay free and focus and close transactions. Neil here, Picard's probably going to close 40 something transactions next year. And he's using our, he's using, see that head go up and down. He's happy. He's excited. He's using our concierge department. So he doesn't have to have salaries and overhead and all that kind of stuff. And he can focus and scale his business to his next level. So that's, that's why we did that. Cause that's what I do. That's what I want to do. That's why I use our concierge department. I don't use it for my looks. I use it because it's leverage. And it, Brenda's laughing. It's leverage, so I can go, Brenda, you need to be out there se selling. Why have you gotten a contract this week? Come on, who'd you talk to today? I can have fun and have a conversation. Look at her laughing. She's embarrassed, right? Because she knows she hasn't made her phone calls today. She <laughs> Jordan's laughing, too, because they're in the same room. They're all laughing. They haven't made their phone calls today, right? It's, it's just a bunch of stuff, right? Anyway, so I'm back on this. Do you see this right here? Okay, so what's the first... P, Sean, what's the first P? I'm gonna tell you, everybody, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make it simple. Your first P is data bank. So write down on the piece of paper, number one, data bank. Used to be called database, but we call it the data bank at Keller Williams now that we have command. So what are the five strategies for your data bank? We're gonna talk about that. Before we go to the five strategies, guess what number two is? What drives listings. all listings? Thank you, Sean Wood. Way to go, girl. Listings. All right. Listings. That's number two. Then we're going to do five strategies for listings. Then what are we going to do for number three? Number three. I, I, you can get a little flexibility there, but I would actually put in number three would be wealth building. Wealth building, how do you build wealth? Profit share, disappearing cap. You refer a capper to Dolores, she signs them in, it's in your profit share, you're getting profit share, you're getting a $5,000 credit off your cap. Who wants a $5,000 credit off? Everybody on this call, I don't even, you should, the most you should pay Keller Williams is $3,000 a year for your royalty. You should be getting cap credits by getting these cappers to Dolores and to Joby and to me and, and let, us, let us help you build your wealth. That's why I shoot her off of this call. I'm like, get out there and build these guys wealth, okay? That's what we're supposed to do is build your wealth because we're your partner. We got your back. All right, so I'm going to say wealth building is number three. We'll just leave it at that, right? Because which, which you can all have buyer business. Buyer business is, is easy. That's part of it. But that could be wealth building this too, right? Working with buyers, buyer agreements. Okay. So in your database, <clears throat> it's December 18th. Next, year, next week's Christmas. So it's December 18th. So you have a choice. You have to decide, are you going to work? How many days are you going to work this month? right? How much are you going to take off? So whether you take off time or you work right up to the 23rd or 22nd or 24th or whatever you do, you know, and then do you come back on Monday the 28th or do you take a week? You know, it's all up. I'm not going to tell you what to do, right? This is your business. But whatever you do, once you're back in the grind of it and you're really launching 2021, we're going to keep it so simple. So this is around your database. So on your database, hey Ewart. So on your database, I want you to call how many people every day and you're gonna connect with, how many? Five, that's right, five or more. 
If you get on a roll and you want to do more, that's fine, but you can't burn yourself out for the next day, right? You do five a day inside command. You're going to have their name, their phone number, their email, their address. If you can get their birthday, great, right? Kid's name, anything you can, wife's name, partner's name, husband's name. You want to build out that. You want to do five of those a day. You want to do five of those a day for a 100 day stretch. The first 100 days in this, this process is the, is the hardest. Once you get that down and get past that, you're going to have cakewalk, okay? And I'm going to give you some scripts about listings. This is how we're turning. So listen now, I'm turning this into listings. If you, want, if you came to this saying, how do I put together a CMA? You need to get back in class at Ignite and go get with your coach and learn how to do a CMA and get with one of our coaches. Okay, 36 years in the business, I'm not gonna teach you how to do a CMA. My CMA is totally different because I come in with posture and it's like I got the three last closed sales, I stand up, I'm at the kitchen counter, Doreen can tell you. I'm, 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 I'm like, this is where we are, here's a high, here's a low, there's a whole script about that, we'll get into that, but it's, it's not, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Go simple, simple, simple. Most of your clients need simple unless they're an en engineer and they ask for more data. Just go simple. Keep it simple. So with these database, you're going to do five a day. You're going to, in this conversation, whether it's before Christmas or after Christmas, if it's before Christmas, you can say happy holidays. And if it's after Christmas, what would you say? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is yeah. not rocket science. This is, it's, it's just, but it's, it's important. It's important because I want to keep it real simple. So we're going to role play, and I'm going to role play with Sean. Mm -hmm. And Sean, you're going to be my client. And we're going to role play this, and we're going to keep it simple. And what I want you to do is just take notes on how we do it, and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to come back and break down every sentence. We're going to break down why I said some things and how I'd say it. Is that okay? Give me a thumbs up. Everybody participating? Okay, good. So ring, ring. Hey, hey, Sean. Hey, how's it going? Oh, good. Uh, you, my name came up on your phone. You, you have my yeah. name. Saved. Yeah, I've got you programmed in. What's up, James? Hey, what's up, girl? I'm the real estate guy. You know me. How are you doing? Yeah, I know. What's going on? I'm pretty busy, Christmas and all. What oh my I gosh, I know you're busy. And just want to just tell you to relax. This is not a sales call. I just wanted to check in and say happy holidays. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It yeah, it's so good to hear your voice. Thank you so much. And just wanted to check in. How's everybody doing? Oh, we're all doing great. Dog has an ear infection, but she's going to be fine. Aw. <laughs> puppy's got an ear infection. Yeah, and she's got the cone of shame. Oh, the cone of shame. Oh, the mm -hmm. cone of shame. That's tough. Yeah, it is. She's really it's mad. hard to her. walk around the neighborhood with the cone of shame, right? It's true. It's true. All the other dogs laughing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. So just listen, I just wanted to touch base with you. Wish you mm -hmm. and your family a happy holidays. Also, I see you've been using our uh, website. I see I have yet that neighborhood nurture on. Just curious, how do you like the website that the, uh, the uh, data we send you in the neighborhood nurture? I think it's really great. I like it a lot. I like how it breaks down the, the uh, stats for me. That is pretty cool. Yeah, that's just a service that we're providing to you and just want to make sure you enjoy it. So I just, I'm glad you like it. Uh, you have any feedback for me on that? Can I make it any better for you? Um, you know, I think it's pretty good the way it is. I don't know how it could get better. Okay, cool. Well, like I told you, I wasn't going to, uh, you know, take a lot of your time today. It's just a, just a warm care call that we're calling all our family and friends and clients and just wishing them happy holidays. I'm glad you're using the site. Just curious, before I go, what are your real estate plans for 2021? You know, I'd really like to get an investment property. Okay, pause. Thank you. So write that down. What, that's, the, that's the third question, by the way. First question's what? Or first statement's what? First statement is, this is not a sales call. You got about five seconds to diffuse that energy so that they're not like, why is this person calling me? right? So that they don't block your number. Mm -hmm. If they're picking up their cell phone, it's so important. You got 
six seconds, nine seconds max to defuse that energy, get a little laugh out of you. Here I got the little laugh out of her, just that one little laugh up front, right? And 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 just want to defuse that. That's why I say, hey, it's the real estate guy, you know, or something fun, whatever your relationship is. Everybody's got a different relationship with that person you're calling, right? So keep it fun and keep it simple. So that's the first thing. Second thing, what was the second thing? I acknowledged that she was on my real estate site. By the way, everybody that's in my 18,000 people that are in my database, right? They, they all know I'm sending them something of something, right? So I can see what I've sent them. I can see what they're looking at. I know I've either sold them a house or one of my, my agent partners have sold them a house, right? So I know I'm a little prepared. You don't just dial into something blindly and, oh, happy holidays. Let's draw a line. Be purposeful with your phone call. Okay, be purposeful with your phone call. So what does that mean? So <clears throat> you want to, before you start a phone call session, let's just say you're gonna call and you're gonna call for 50 minutes, 5 50 minutes, or let's just say you're driving down the road and you think about somebody and you pull the car over and you call them. You wanna be purposeful, okay? So my purpose was what? Wish them a happy holidays, connect, established that I knew they were on my, my site and using that, get some feedback, right? So she hit the ball back with me. She likes the site. I could have gone into, yes, I'm excited. Our company spends $100 million a year on technology. Take a look at some of the cool stuff we're doing. Give me some feedback. I could have gone into all that, right? But this is a care call right before the holidays. And then you're going to say, well, how does this get more listings? So what was the question that I said about listings? What are your real estate? What are your plans for 2021? Yeah, just curious, just curious, write that down. Just curious, what are your real estate plans for 2021? That is an open-ended question. Write that down, open-ended question. We only ask open-ended questions. We do not ask yes or no questions, ever. I don't care if you ask your kids something for dinner. You say, by the way, I'll give you a little hint. Never say, do you want chicken fingers for dinner? That's yes <laughs> or no. That's a freaking headache. You don't want to hear that, right? You say, would you like chicken fingers, pizza, or salad? Or would you like broccoli salad? Or whatever your choices are. Give them choices. The same thing, okay? It's the same thing. So you want to give them choices. Open-ended questions. So then, so we, we, we built rapport. We established. And then, so when she brought up the investment property, so I say to myself, okay, we're going to go back into that role play. So, okay, great, Sean. So just to, just to be sure, you just said if you, you may think buy an investment property in 2021? Yeah, that's my goal. That's your goal? Yeah, to buy an investment property in 2021. Oh, that's cool. What would that look like, Sean? You know, I'd really like something, maybe like two units, a duplex or something, where I can uh, do Airbnb out of it, somewhere by the water maybe up north a little bit. Awesome. Okay, teaching point. Why did I ask her what would it look like? Okay, when I asked her the second question, I see you on my site, blah, blah, blah. She used what kind of words about how she enjoyed my site? Visual. Visual. So there's, there's four, right? You have visual, kinesthetic, mm -hmm. auditory, and... and um, taste, right? So, but it's visual. You're looking for any words that come out of that mouth and their mouth in the first 15 to 20 seconds. I'm busy now. I'm doing something. I'm fixing the kids this. I'm working in the yard. I'm pushing a lawnmower. I'm driving my car. That is a doing. I can't talk right now. I'm looking for the, you know, you're looking for keywords that they use in their psychology. So when you're talking to them, you can describe what you want to do in those key words, either visual, kinesthetic, or auditory. So if she said visual, I said, okay, okay what would the investment property look like? If she said, oh, I can't feel this. I'm having a hard time feeling what you're saying or whatever, that's, that's kinesthetic. I would say, what would the house feel like? What would the investment property feel like? What would it, you know, so just pick up on those cues. That's real important when you're talking to your people so you can help guide them. 
So you're looking for an investment property, Sean, and, and you want to Airbnb it, right? Yeah. Cool. Tell me more. Well, you know, I haven't given much thought to it and I really haven't started looking. I've been kind of caught up with the holidays. But I definitely want it to um, have cash flow from the get-go. Cash flow from the get-go. So she said a few more looking words there. Did you get that part? I haven't started looking. I haven't thought. Mm -hmm. Very mental, right? A little mental there. A little mental processing. It's very interesting. By the way, when I'm doing this, I find this very fascinating. I, I enjoy this more than anything. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, and, and also too, always write down, write another line and write down, you repeat everything they say. People want to do business with people they trust. Can they, they're asking a few questions. It's two or three questions. Can they trust you? And can you, can you help them? Do you have, you know, can they trust you? Can you help them get what they want? Are you just an order taker? Or are you a deal maker? Are you going to help them get what they want and you're going to protect them, right? But that all comes from trust. That all comes from trust. Can they trust you? And, and are you going to be able to help them? Right? So, so now I got a conversation going with someone for 2021 about our investment property. And I say, just curious, is this cash or financing, Sean? Cash. Cash. Okay, cool. So which, what's the price point? Have you thought about a price point with you and your husband? I haven't actually. Okay. So how much cash do you want to invest? Um, maybe like 250. 250. Okay. So how many people just raise your hand, be a little vulnerable. How many people got a little, a little anxious when I asked her how much cash she, she had uh, to invest? Mariana did. She's nodding her head, head a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Give me a head. Come on, be vulnerable. Just raise your hand. Who got anxious? Linda, anybody else? Come on, raise your, Samantha, did you get anxious about that? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. good. So I'm not crazy. So <clears throat> this is important. Was that a healthy risk for me? Yeah, that was a healthy risk, right? That was like, what's an unhealthy risk? An unhealthy risk is going up the turnpike 200 miles an hour, right? These are healthy risks. These are healthy risks that you're going to expand. Why? Because I knew she trusted me a little bit. And I, and, I, and, I, and I asked that kind of question. If I don't know that question or that answer, can I help her find a, a am I going to waste my time? If, I mean, let's just say she said, oh, uh, we haven't started saving yet. Right? Mm -hmm. But if she says, oh, no, we got $225,000 in the bank, right? We're, we want to buy, we want to buy one. Okay, so what's my job? My job is to be her real estate investor. Uh, my job is to be her financial advisor in real estate. You're the real estate consultant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're a fine. Yeah, but that's a little, that's, a, yeah, you're right. But that's a, you want to be, so they, hopefully they have a stockbroker or a financial inv inv uh, investor, right? Why is it important? Do I want to know who that is? So I can get with that guy or gal and not only grow my business, but help protect them on the real estate portfolio side. So she's got, if she's got 200, this is important. Listen up. If she's got 250,000 bucks that she's going to invest, who actually wants that money invested with them more than me? The brokers. The stockbroker, right. So I can alienate that person. But I don't want to alienate that person. I want to build my relationship with that person because that person has a whole group of people that I want to get in contact with and sell real estate to, right? And if I help this person, if I come up with a plan and help Sean and her husband buy a portfolio of 10 investment properties that cash flows money out into his account that he can help them invest over the next 10 years. Is he on my side? Yes, he's on my side. Correct. So and now if I help her, if I sell her one property and she pays cash for one thing and I don't get her multiple properties and I, I don't teach her about leverage and about these low rates I know if someone's got 225,000, 250,000, I'm thinking, okay, I can at least get them into 10 properties. 
not to take advantage of them, but to help them use leverage properly. So, but we're gonna have to find 10 really good properties. We're gonna start with one, but I'm not gonna let her blow that 225 on one. We're gonna make sure every deal, this is important, draw a line, every deal stands on its own. So every property, Brenda, every investment property stands on its own. So wh what does that mean? So we're gonna teach Sean and her husband as investors how to cash flow that property out to put reserves in there, calculate the ROI. We're going to give them, make sure, make sure they have a copy of our book. Right? This is flip. See? So like I'm, I'm doing this right here, right? So one of my agent partners I'm not, will, on this call will remain nameless, but they're going to try to flip a house. Okay, so they need to do what? They need to study. <laughs> they need to study this book immensely so they don't go off into the deep end or in the rails, right? Would this be a good book for your investor clients as a gift for the holidays? Yes. Right. The uh, where's the other investment book? Anyway, they'll bring it to me. So we have two books for your investors. So one's called flip, the other one's called what? Hold, hold. So she's talking about buying something and holding it for cash flow, right? So when would be a good time for me to get with her before Christmas and give her a nice Christmas gift called hold and go and read it with her? Hey, let's read a chapter, Sean, let's read a chapter of time and, and learn how to buy and hold investment properties. Would that be a good gift for you and your clients? Absolutely. So I made this call. I got a happy holidays. I've acknowledged she's on the site. We're building some rapport. Now I got a gift I'm going to give her called Hold, written by Gary Keller and Jay Papazon and those, that group and the McKissicks, right? The McKissicks are living proof of this business. They have 200 rental properties, right? From that one book, they wrote the book. So we're we'll all read that book together. I'm kind of preaching to my group here, right? But I just made a one care call into possibly 10, 10 rental properties or investment properties, which is 10 transactions from one call. So you wanna think about that. Would that be kind of cool if you, one of your people wanted to do that? By the way, we used to be able to get them to buy 10 properties when the rates were 7%. At 2.2% with zero money down right now and 30 year financing, and no points in the program, they can, they can have up to, I think, up to 10 FHA homes. Is that right? I think so. I mean, this is crazy, right? So what's the one problem? The one problem is how do you find them at such a good deal where they're gonna cash flow, right? But see what's also too, what's, we're gonna talk more about that. So that's just one call. So would you feel good if you just had a call like that, if you went through all those, all those questions and figured all that out? Now, the trick, the trick to this is, is you want to continue to make calls. You just, like I made notes by Sean, right, of what I'm going to do with and follow up and mail her the book and, and set up this and send her the properties. But I'm going to keep calling. The problem is most agents stop and they go work on Sean for the rest of the day and they've made one call. I see Mariana nodding her head, right? It's like so important. So we wanna to continue to work the garden, till the garden, right? I'm a gardener, so you wanna work that garden from nine till noon and really touch and really help as many people as possible, five or more a day for 100 days, okay? You wanna book an appointment mid, early afternoon, mid, uh, later afternoon, and then get a cup of coffee or whatever and go home. So if you get two appointments in every day, you're good. Don't try to go crazy and do three and four. Just get two appointments in, go home, rest, and regroup. So let's talk about that. So me, this is what I do. You do whatever you want to do, but this is what I do. I turn all my Wi-Fi and my cell phone and everything off early. You want to do that to set boundaries. You want to set your message up on your cell phone to where it's, it sets a boundary with your clients. You also want to teach your clients how you want to be treated so that you, you're, you're respecting yourself 
and they're respecting you, right? So, <clears throat> and then I, I go to bed early between 9.30 and 10. I'm, or, I mean, I go to bed early. If I can go to the earlier, the better. I'm up 5.30, 6 in the morning or earlier, if sometimes earlier. And then I do my prayer, my meditation time, my stretching. Then I'm off on walking three to five miles. And then I'm, I'm, I'm working right with you guys right around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. But I get all that done because I'm thinking about my day of who I'm going to help, who, which one of you, or how, what class I'm going to teach, or, or what client I'm going to help. And that's what I'm focusing on during that time so that when I get on the phone and make my care calls, people know that I'm present. I'm, I'm there with it. I'm, a, I'm there with to serve them. Does that make sense? There you go, Joan. So <clears throat> what's the, when you're talking about the technology on the site, does everybody raise your hand if you know how to do a neighborhood nurture? Please, everybody raise your hand. If you don't, get with, get with all your tech people and your coaches, but everybody needs to know how to do a neighborhood nurture. So that's one of the things in the five, right? You always want to ask permission before you hang up. So Sean, is it okay if I, if I uh, follow up with you? Absolutely. I look forward to your calls. Awesome. So just, just curious, Sean, if I find that investment property that, that's like meets all your criterias, criteria that we've discussed today, is it okay if I call you and text you right away? You're going to you respond because we're going to act fast, right? Yeah, you better. Don't be okay, wasting good. time. So then I hang the phone up. I got permission to call her. I hang the phone up. And then what do I do right after? Make another call. <laughs> Close. What I'm going to do right after, close, Alejandro. What I'm going to do before that is I'm going to text Sean. And I'm going to say, thank you so much for the time today, Sean. It's so nice to connect with you. I'm looking forward to finding you that investment property. I got gotcha. you. And she's going to reply back or thank you so much. It was great. Once you have a texting relationship with them now, this used to be different two years ago. You could call them, leave messages, the whole nine yards. That's done but you must text them after that call and just acknowledge the call and say, thank you for your time. And then they'll give you a smiley face or a thumbs up. And then you're like, okay, got them. I can communicate with them like that. So then if I'm out riding around or if I'm looking at investment properties, I go, you got to see this house. And I pop a picture of it. And then I say, where are you right now? You got to see this. Oh, we're at lunch. Awesome. When will you be done? And then they come over and they see the home. You walk them through. They're already pre-approved with your lender, Leah. They're like ready to go, ready to buy. By the way, the next step with Sean, if she's got 200 and something thousand, I'm going to get her with Leah and get her pre-approved for financing for at least four or five rental properties and just scale it from there and have her keep that only break off like 20 grand at a time to buy those properties, right? Amazing, amazing leverage. Greatest leverage in the world. God bless America leverage there. That's amazing, right? I mean, those are great rates and, and we're just so blessed. It will not be like that forever, everybody. You need to be calling people like left and right right now because this is not going to be 2.2 and 2.3. I mean, it could easily be over 3% this time next year. Easy. Easy. If COVID dies down, God willing, and everything starts moving around again, they're going to bump those rates. They have to right? And everybody's going to be going, man, I wish I would have, right? You want to get to your people now and service the next 10, see Bailey nodding her head. She's like, yep, that's right. You want to get to those people now. So <clears throat> if you really want to go deep on this connection, what's the other thing I would do with for Sean? I'd send her a little hand note, right? See her smile. Did you see that smile? Do you know what Sean sent me? Sean sent me a hand note. I still have it on my desk at home because it means something to me, right? That meant the world to me when she did that. So when Sean calls me, I'm fired up, excited to answer my phone because I want to help Sean, right? Because she's, we're building a relationship and trust, right? So that was kind of cool. So <clears throat> you can go deep and you can send him a little note with your you know, business card or not in there. That's really going deep right? Meaning like deep into trust level, like how will they trust you? Can they trust you? 
it doesn't take a lot. If you get 50 to 100 people like that that really trust you and that are your raving fans, game over. You're talking quarter million, half a million in this business. But you got to get 50 raving fans, 100 raving fans to when they think of like, they're, if they're giving you, if 50 people give you two to three referrals every year, how big is that business? You can be on a team, you know, a team partner with a showing partner and do 100, 150, 200 transactions a year. You have no cost. You're making 50% of everything. You're making a quarter million bucks a year. You're working four days a week. You got a showing partner for your open houses. I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing life. By the way, the show, the agent partner on a team, if they're really talented with a showing partner is the most profitable part in our whole KW model. Okay. Rainmakers for these big teams, if they're making 20% net, 25% net, they're lucky. Most of them, unfortunately, are not making that because they're spending too much money. So think about that. The single agent, like, you know, some of the agents on here that are single agents, that's the most profitable thing in the business. What are your expenses? Your cap, your cell phone, your gas, some coffee, eat at home, right? You don't need to be buying people lunch and stuff. Just keep it simple. That's the most those are two, you know, very, very profitable parts in the business. Okay. So we've asked that. We've asked what their plans are. We've made five of those a day. If How good would you feel if you finished the day off and you had five conversations like that? Like, I mean, Nina went like this, right? I mean, you'd have like, if you had just five conversations like that every day and you did it four to five days a week, and you had that kind of book of business you were building, how confident were you? I mean, after, after like seven of those closings, <clears throat> right? And you got your bills paid, there's no credit card debt, you got six months saved in the bank and you're just bankrolling, right? What are some questions right now so far before I, before I um, finish this up here? Because we're going to end right on time. I only do 50-minute calls, so we got five more minutes. What are some of the questions? No well, question. I, I got one for you. We haven't talked about listings yet, have we? Have we or not? I mean, yeah, eventually. It, it turns into a listing, hopefully. Well, uh, when we talk about their neighborhood nurture, did we talk about listing conversation there? Like their address is in your command, right? And you have their 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 development. Yeah, if they right? see the prices are well, maybe they want to sell. I don't know. Right? Have you explained to them how that command works, where they're traveling anywhere in the United States, and if they click on a house, you can help them and be their local. You could be their real estate advisor anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. That's a huge referral piece. Like if they're out skiing in Colorado and they're looking at villas and those villas are 750 to a million two and they like one of them and you see it on your command and you're like, oh my gosh, they're in Colorado. Hey, how you doing guys? I see on Facebook, you guys are in Colorado. You having a good trip? Yeah. Just curious. It looks like you're looking around on our app out there for some real estate. Is now time to buy something in Colorado? Oh my gosh, I can't believe you said that. We were just talking about that last night at dinner. Wonderful. Would you like for me to interview and set up one of my, my certified agent partners in Colorado that can hold your hand through the process and I can also watch over that and make sure you're taken care of? That would be great, Nina. Would you do that for us? Absolutely. I'll make some calls right now and I'll be back to you. I'll text you when I get some, I'm going to interview three, okay? Wonderful, Nina. You do that for us? Yeah, that's right. That's the conversation that you're going to be doing, right? <clears throat> That's no other company in the world can do that. Just so if she would have said, oh, we're going to go spend the, the winter in Colorado. What would I have been thinking about? That. Right. Oh, we're traveling back up to north, the northeast. Oh, do you have a home up north? Oh, that's funny you say that. We have a house in New York we're trying to sell. Boom. <coughs> so you always want to be asking questions and repeating what they say. Asking questions and repeating what they say. Not to sound like a parrot, but just to really get them to feel comfortable and confident that you're the person for them. Okay. If you do that, if you, the, why am I starting with this? <clears throat> I'm going to end with this. I'm starting with this because if you do that five people a day for a hundred days, it's 500 people. You've bulletproofed your database. 
bulletproof your database. I was talking to a mega agent yesterday with another company, a friend of mine I've known forever, is they're out of the area. And she was so upset. What was she upset about? She's been in the business 25 years. But she was so upset because the company she was with had just signed a deal with Op City. And that Op City, which is a phone call service, referral service, was now charging her 35 to 45% on everybody on her database. They were charging her, right, they were charging her like any sign calls that came in on that listing went to Op City and then she had to pay a referral back for that sign call. Does that make you want to puke? Right. So think about, think about these things as your, as your business partner. We have all these things set up for you for purposefully. So why was she really sick though? She was really sick because she was, she was upset because she was at her neighbor. She's been with this neighbor for 20 some odd years. And that neighbor said, I'll just make her name up because I don't want to tell you who it is. Sally, uh, we love you so much, but Bob and I are kind of conflicted on this. I want to list with you, but he had a buddy at work use Zillow and they sold his house for 3% in Orlando. And I know Zillow's opening up here now in Palm Beach County. And we just got an email proposal from them and we're going to list our house with Zillow, but we love you. And you know, you can bring us a buyer and they'll pay you 3% and all that stuff. Right. She went home and cried. I mean, she was just so, so embarrassed because her neighbor's going to have a Zillow sign in the front of it. Okay. This is today. This is happening in real life today. So <clears throat> I coached her. She's not even with my company. I'm going to coach her on one thing. I coached her on one thing and she's like, thank you so much. I think she's going to be joining us. But I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to share that with you guys today. Okay. Has anybody ever had that happen where they said they were going to use a discount broker or something like that? You have a few people have. Okay. So can I teach you one thing on how to take that off the table? Is that okay, Ewart? Okay, so <clears throat> this, is, this, is, this is where we have to be aggressive as a company, and this comes from Gary Keller. So I call it, I call it my family and friends flex plan. Okay, so write down family and friends flex plan. So with that neighbor, her, that would be a friend of hers, right? That so she would qualify for the family and friends flex plan. And by the way, even if I was on a listing appointment, if someone said that, if once I built enough rapport for it, I would say, you know, I, I, I'd like to extend, I would like to extend, which is a gift from me to you, right? Because it's what they feel like, oh, we're feeling, we're feeling lucky, right? I'd like to extend my family and friends flex plan to you. Do you know what that is? And they're going to say, no, what's that? And you're going to say, okay, well, it's a win-win and we develop this for our family and friends and our, our, our good clients. So the family and friends flex plan goes like this. So Bob, so you have Zillow that's gonna be listing your place and they're gonna pay a buyer 3%, right? A buyer agent, they're gonna pay the buyer agent. By the way, they're not paying buyer agents 3%, but they're gonna, they're gonna charge you 3%. So my family and flex plan is if it goes like this, if I, if I sell it with another co-broke, it's one percentage. And I can't tell you guys what to charge by law. So you have to pick up your own percentages. So we're going to just say, if I sell it with two co-brokes, it's 1%. It could be 5%, 6%, 7%. I got some agents right now charge 8%, right? You know how they do it? They offer a lot of value and they're very confident in their presentation. What's the difference between charging 6% and 8%? It's all confidence. That's the only thing it is, right? It's confidence and value. So I charge this if they're two brokers. If I, I got a 50% chance of selling it myself, then the, I only charge this fee, right? And then, by the way, if you have a buyer that from church or something like that, I'll do it for this fee, right? So if they bring a buyer and you write up the contract, right? So you want to be able to write that in down in the other comments so it takes all those objections off the table if they want to list with someone else. There should be no reason they would list with anybody else if it comes down to commission. So you want to think through that so that you can dial and have a little more flexi flexibility in your game plan. 
the days of like, oh, I charge this and that's what I do. That's fine. You can do that and you can have a lot of posture, but I want you to be purposeful. If, if you want a listing to where, you know, that's going to sell in 60 days, I'm going to get five other deals from it because it's an amazing listing. Get aggressive and go for that. Now, I wouldn't reduce your commission to, to zero, God forbid, but the, the least I would do it, the least I would do it by myself would be three to 4%. So it's six, five, four, five, four, three, but you want to make sure you're really, and by the way, when you're a capping agent and you've capped, right, this is your business. You're my business partner. My job is to help you cap and make as much money as possible and build a life that's amazing. That's my job, right? So you have to be purposeful because you're going to be competing against a Redfin and a Zillow and all these different things. And you need to get these listings. You don't want to just be a buyer agent. You want to get listings and have leverage. Okay. Even if you're on a team, you want to get listings, listings, listings. We're focused on listings, listing based company because that flows listings helps everything flow. Okay. How confident do you guys feel with your listing presentation? On a scale of one to 10. Let's start at the top. Jordan, how confident? Do you give me a number on your listing presentation? How confident? That's an eight. Sean, what do you got? Seven. Neil, what do you got? A 10, a nine. Wow. So <clears throat> if I were a nine, how many, if I go on 10 listings, how many should I get? nine okay now that's pretty good that's pretty good so so i'm gonna ask again jordan okay so let's <laughs> see here now so if you're going on 10 listings think of it in this context you're a five thank you for being vulnerable five so 50 50 so i know if i send her out on 10 listing appointments she's going to bring back five listings great that'll be awesome that'll be awesome we'll start there sean how many do you think you'll get Five. It's cool. Neil, want to change your number from nine? <laughs> Six. Samantha? Five. Five. Nina? Six. Linda? Nine. Five. Mariana? Five. Brenda? Five. Ina? Five. Ewart? Seven. Dang, nice. Joan? Just give me some numbers. I don't know how to answer this. I just get called for listings and I list property. So you're a 10? Uh, I, I just get called and I list. Okay, but that's not the question. The question is if yeah, I... It's a, yeah, it would, be, it, would be a, it would be 9, 10. So if I send someone out, I say to myself, if I say, hey, Joan, I want you to go on this listing apartment, you're going you're gonna to get it no matter what? See, there's a difference. She's getting... Is, she, yeah. Yeah, but she's, no, no, it's different. She's mm -hmm. been in the business for a long time. So her phone rings and that's past clients and referrals. Right. That's different than what I'm talking about. I know. I understand I know. you. Just, great. So she has a book of business. She's awesome. So it's different question than, than that. This is not like a, this is like if you're getting an appointment set and you're going out. Okay. All right. So we'll stop right there. So <clears throat> all you want to do is, Ask yourself, by the way, this is not just one call and we're done. This is a mastermind, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to build from this call and continue to build. So you want to ask yourself, what's one thing you can do to get better this week to get better at listings, to get up from a five to a six, right? So what's that one thing? You got to think about that. You only know your business better than I, you know your business better than I know your business. What's that one thing? Is it the That's standing up? Stats. What? Stats. Stats. Okay. Yes. So don't need stats. Okay. She needs to understand stats more. Okay. Present it more. Better. So presenting more. So <clears throat> I go country on this. I'm from Georgia. This is how I do it. I get three closed sales. I actually pull up the full, the full MLS sheet. I make sure the other broker's name is not on there. I want, I circle days on market. I circle, right. I circle list price. I circle sales price. I do three of these. I lay them out on the kitchen countertop. 
And I say, I'm standing up, they're sitting down because I'm leading the meeting, I'm in authority, okay? And I say, just curious, how does your house compare to these three houses? And then I shut up and I take notes and I educate them, you're an educator. I educate them on that. That's those three houses is all that matters. If they say, well, what about the one listed down the street? It's available. I said, we're only gonna talk about sold here. This is what's sold. You gotta get to Texas in 60 days, right? Right, okay. Then I, that, that's all I focus on. These are my stats, so I go country with that. But that's I, what I actually use. Okay, that's why you're probably a nine or 10, that's perfect. I just would say, I would disagree with you. I don't think you need more stats. I think you need, just need more appointments. Probably. Right? So if she, right, I mean, if, if, if I know, if I know she's getting nine out of 10, what I, I just say, go on another appointment, figure it out. Just don't, you know, don't overthink it, right? Because she's going to get it. So that's what I do. Very, very simple. Mm -hmm. When people come in with these big electronic things and, and all this kind of stuff, it's all good. But what do they care, remember? Do they like you? Can they trust you? Can they feel your heart? Do you have their best interest? Are you gonna go to battle with them, for them? That's all they care about. Now they may go to the other stuff, which is fine if they're an engineer and all that kind of stuff. And you can go there, but you just wanna get up to bat, get up to bat, get up to bat, build trust, open your heart <coughs> and help them in the process. Does that make sense? Yes, I should have said, I should have said electronic presentation. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I should have said. That's okay. That's fine, Joan. You're good. So <clears throat> this is a, base this is, this is a base foundation. If you do the hundred days, if you do the hundred days and you talk to 500 people and set them up properly, how many listings do you think you should get from that? I'd say at least 10. <laughs> no, I'd say if you do, I'd say at least 10. So if you look at your business plan with a one, three, five, with 10 listings, if you, if you all got 10 listings next year, you would triple your business. Yeah. Because I know all your businesses, right? You would, tr you would, you would just, your business would skyrocket if you got 10 new listings next year. And it's all going to come from that database piece. So <clears throat> the next time we'll talk about the five strategies for listings. So we talked about the five strategies for database. Okay. One of them's neighborhood nurture, right? What are the five strategies for database real quick before we end? And we'll just end on that. And then we'll, we'll pick up on listings, the five strategies for listings. Cause if you don't get the database done, it's, this is, it's, it's, this is like, I don't even want to get to the other stuff. It's a mute point if we don't get the database done for you guys. So database, five strategies. First strategy is five calls a day, yep. right? Ask your, three, ask your three questions. Neighborhood nurtures, right? Text and acknowledge. Text and After. acknowledge, thank you. And then hand note, if you would hand like. Hand note, another one, great. These are all great strategies. So those are database strategies and set a reminder to call them in the next quarter, right? Or bring something of value. Like with Sean, I'm gonna be finding her an investment property. The next step for Sean would have been go to Leah, my lender. That's, a, that's the next thing. I was getting my hair cut yesterday. <coughs> Guy started talking about wanting to buy a place. Leah, he's already pre-approved and everything. I could have just sat through, got my hair cut and been done with it. Wouldn't still, we want to all, sorry. What, Linda? No, I was going to say, wouldn't we want to also set them up on opportunities and smart plans? Yeah, that's a strategy. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a strategy. That's right. Great. That's exactly right. The majority of the homes I've ever sold were to people like doing the yard, doing the roof, People need, I mean, we're here, to, we're, we're social workers for the world. And then I'll stumble on someone that's got a $5 million house that they want to sell. But you sell real estate. If it's got dirt under it, you sell it. So don't overcomplicate it. And just, I do the four foot rule. If they get four feet from in me, I'm, I'm prospecting, talking to them, chatting them up. That's important. Just do the four foot rule. That's a strategy too. 
someone gets within four feet of me, they're going to talk to me. I'm going to figure out what's going on, where they live. Are they renting? Are they, are they buying? They want investment property. Do they rent? Do they own? Who do they know? Not like a, not like a, a salesperson person, but just to like a, just a, just a real loving community service. You want to come very warm in this piece, not salesy. And if you just repeat what they say in a nice way, you know, and mirror and match with them, it doesn't come across scripted. I, you got to know the scripts so that they become like invisible and you can just have fun with it. But Thanks. I don't, yeah, go ahead. Who's that? That's Nina. Go ahead. I just, how do you overcome those indirect objections that we have so many real estate agents out there right now. So every time you talk to someone, FISPO, expired, whoever, they, they know someone, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, the cousin, they're all realtors. So I got a plan for that. So Nina, you, you, you need to sell your house, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So, and you say you have a, a relative that is a yeah, my dad and my dad in law. He's he's a your father in law. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. So this is an actual role play. This is what I would say. Okay, and if you cringe, it's okay. So this is what I would say. So I'd say, oh, your father in law's in the business. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what they say, right? Don't do business with family. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. You said that. That's see, I didn't. Say, so she said it, not me, right? And I laugh, and she laughs, and I say, you know what? What I'd really like to propose is let me do all the heavy lifting and do all the work for you and I'll pay your father-in-law a referral so that he's happy and I'll do all the heavy lifting and you can protect your personal relationship with your father-in-law and you can have a professional sell your house. How about that? Hmm, I'm not sure about that because I think he's going to be really upset if I don't use him. Oh, what that's, oh, I know how that is. That's for sure. So he's going to be upset. So are you going to be upset if he doesn't sell your house? Yeah. Oh, right. So then he's going to be upset and you're going to be upset and the house is not going to sell. How's that going to work? I mean, he's doing this for 20 years. So I, I think he's going to sell it. Oh, you 20. Oh, you're, 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 uh, he's doing it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would I focus on? It's not about 20 years in the business. It's about, it's about protecting their family relationship. Okay. I really do believe that by the way, mm -hmm. I wouldn't just pitch that to him. I actually do believe that it's very, very, important, especially with real estate. Mm -hmm. I have paid so many referrals out to agents that were fine with me handling it because they, by the way, what they really don't tell you is that father-in-law is scared to take that listing because he doesn't want to get yelled at by Nina. Okay. It's normal. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's normal, but they're not going to tell you that. Okay. By the way, whatever they tell you, that's what they're supposed to tell you. Oh, I, oh, can I, that's what, for example, when they say, oh, I'm just looking, of course you're just looking. By the way, if you found something you were looking at, what would it look like? You got to you gotta just like, whatever they say, repeat it and say, of course. And you could say, I could say, Nina, of course you want to have your father-in-law help you. He's going to be part of my team. And let me explain to you how that's going to happen. And I go back into that. By the way, if I know, if I've been in the business 36 years, is there a chance that I know her father-in-law? Yeah. So I say, Nina, just, just curious, which I know you, I know your father-in-law, Bob, is it okay with you? I just give him a call and just chat with him how we can work together as a team to get this thing sold for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Right. That happens all the time. Why do I say that? She doesn't want to let Bob down. I know Bob, Bob's probably a, maybe a great agent, maybe not. I might know he stinks, right? I might know that like, he's really bad. I might know that he is so burnt out, but doesn't want to tell her is not going to spend any money. I may know that, right? So what's my next call to Bob? Hey, Bob, I was making my calls today and I came across your net, your, your uh, sister and your uh, daughter-in-law. Thank you, Joan. Your daughter-in-law, Nina. And Nina says she wants to sell her place, but she says she's thinking about having you help her sell it, which I totally get. Bob, what would it look like if I do all the work for you and I'll pay you a referral on this. And that way you can have a great relationship with Nina and I'll do all the work and all the heavy lifting on this. Why, why, is, why does that usually work? That usually actually works. Why? Because he's scared to talk to Nina about the truth about the price. 
He's scared to tell her that it's not going to, he's not going to get, if he's, if he doesn't get the price, she's going to be mad at him. And it's going to be cause a big family, family rift. By the way, this is a great example, Nina, because everybody on here has this whole thing going on in their head. You got to take it off the cut and shine a light on it and be that social worker, family person and help those people so they don't blow up their family system about one stupid real estate deal. And I'll tell Bob that. I'll say, Bob, you know me, you know, or you guys can use the company. Hey, Bob, you know our office. We sell 100 houses a month. We're the number one listing and selling office in Palm Beach County. Let us take care of this for you, Bob. That's what you say if you're brand new in this business. It's the power of we. That's why you're part of this office and these offices, right? So <clears throat> you want to get in there and help Bob and Nina have a healthy relationship. They can go to the beach. You can take care of all the heavy lifting. Bob, you know I'm going to spend a heck of a lot more money listing and selling this place than you're going to do it, Bob. So let me spend my money and I'll pay you the 25% referral on this and you guys can go enjoy yourself. I've, Neil's like, yeah, I'll do that. I mean, <clears throat> by the way, hundreds of times I've had to do that. And it's not because I'm trying to scoop the deal. I actually, in my heart, know that it's best for me to take that listing and not Bob. I, can, I don't know how many times I sit there. By the way, if you see all those expire, if anything you see that's expired in the last 12 months, it's probably because of that situation right there because Bob hadn't had the guts to tell Nina that it's overpriced, it's never going to sell. Or it's a neighbor or someone they felt obligated. If anything doesn't sell in the last year, that's usually it. They've been so scared to tell that client they need to reposition the price to the market and the market's rejecting their list price and that's why it expired. Does that make sense? Give me some nods on that. Does that make sense? So, so dive into that. When you get an object, objection, they're just doing their job. They're supposed to object to you. What do you want them to do? Roll down and say, rub my belly and sell my house? I mean, it's like, it's, 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 it, they're not going to do that, right? It's like when you go into a store, hey, can I help you? No, I'm just looking. That's what we're supposed to say. You know, that's human nature. Has this been just a little bit helpful today? I know I've been rambling and bouncing all around. Everywhere, yes, yes, yes. This is just how I, this is how I roll. I'm a little crazy. <laughs> more, than, more than a little helpful. More than a little crazy. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Thanks. Anything else? Anything else before we wrap up? Is everybody good? Is everybody ready to like go into this holidays with care calls? Go ahead, Mariana. Mariana, go ahead. She's muted. You're muted. Mariana, you're muted. You got to unmute yourself. Click. It doesn't. Okay, there you go. I, I just got a quick question on the two books you mentioned, The Flip and The Hold. Uh, do you have them available in your office? or just, You through? can go right onto Amazon.com and order yeah. them. They'll be there tomorrow. Okay, yeah, that's great, just, thank you. That's the easiest way, it's free shipping, it goes right to your house. If I were me, I would invest in your business and buy, I would not, I would do the hold more than the flip right now. And I would buy the, I would buy 10 holds, you know, or a few holds for your clients. That's what I would do. Yeah, I'm working with an investment um, client and I think right. that's a wonderful idea for Christmas. That's perfect. Great. Yep, yep. Thank you. Hey, okay, everybody. I Merry love your stuff. James, yeah. quick Go question. Ahead, yep. Where can I find the 135? I know the 411 is on Connect. Is that is the 135 in there also? Yeah, so so this is, we just yes, went it's through it. called GPS. Yeah, it's, it's, not, GPS. it's no longer GPS. called 135. Right. It's called GPS. Bailey GPS. sent Thank it you. in the chat. Thank you. Awesome teamwork, everybody. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Be well. Happy, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Hanukkah end last night. All the different holidays. I love you all. You're my partners and I believe in you. 2021 is going to be amazing. Amazing. So God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye-bye.